The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. In this unique dispensation of the church age, being summed out as Alakene Ketesis, it is our privilege to note that what we are there, outward appearance, is not a matter in the church. It is not a matter to the congregation. It is not a matter to the people whom we get along. But what you appear inward is a matter towards Christ. Your personal love towards God causes you to show forth impersonal love towards all mankind, not with ifs and buts, not with talibis, but rather telling them the truth when you take number one priority for Bible doctrine. The trends that are happening around in our churches today makes the pastor not only to be worthy enough to be obedient and not to be confirmed to the former lusts in our ignorance. We are neither obedient to God's word, nor we are obedient to the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, nor we are capable of understanding what will be the truth in the word of the Lord as we go through in our lives. And what is the reason that is happening around that we are not able to go through in our lives through the obedience? Why are we not able to master our roles in nature? The pure reason is ignorance, ignorance, and ignorance. Ignorance undercuts every good intention. Ignorance leads them to become chaotic in nature. Arrogance ends up in a manner that they are not able to be corrected further because they are not interested to be corrected. In the pulpits and in the churches and in the pews. Ignorance has been reigning over them. That's the reason apostasy has been rampant to the core in our pulpits. Why is this ignorance today in our churches? Purely because we are not aware what is the importance of Bible doctrine, dear brethren. We are not aware what will be the importance of Bible doctrine when we go up and learn in the word of the Lord. And it's very much pathetic to note. There aren't enough pastors who are really obedient to God's word to change their former lust patterns. If they would have really been obedient to God's word, do you know? They would have really been a true disciple of Christ. But they are not humble enough. They are looking upon only for the lust pattern of money to be fulfilled. Store up the money for this generation, for their next generation as well. For the children's children, 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 they want to store the money and keep. What they call, they call their pastors. And they are morons as well who are supplying them this aid. They are not really supplying the aid. They are supplying them a disease known as epidemic realm of AIDS. They are in return not providing an aid, an aid of health, but causing them to develop AIDS among them. Not really the physical AIDS, but an AIDS towards lies, towards hypocritical methods, towards fake reports rather than being obedient to the truth of Bible doctrine and to the truth of the brethren wherewith they have been given this in charge, in the ignorance of the knowledge of Christ, they are really thinking, what next we will see in the heaven, but let us enjoy first this earth. How valuable is their time in this earth, they are not able to understand. How valuable is the privilege wherewith Lord has called for us in these churches, they are not able to understand. How valuable will be the truth of Bible doctrine, wherewith that is the only reward in the heaven, they are not able to understand. And how valuable it would be for us when we really fear and have the true integrity towards Christ in these churches, they are never capable of realizing it. And how valuable it would be for us when we enter into the throne room of grace after our death having abundance to the praise of his glory, they are not able to understand. Wrongly dividing the word of truth among themselves, and they call other ones who really tell the word of the Lord in truth as cults. Because they do not know this doctrine, it is alien to them. 
what their so-called mind analyzes, that is what they're going to analyze, and they think that is the great one, that is the true one, that is the fantastic one, what they can get back. Whenever we tell about this gap theory, the people will think it is a varied one, and there is no gap theory in the Bible. That's what they want to claim. Dear brethren, it's very pathetic to note that their disobedience, their arrogance to change and to look upon the original languages of the scriptures with the thorough meditation of the search, what we have noted in the previous step, investigation. Investigation under the mental ministry of light God, the Holy Spirit, which can lead you to give the truth, provided you have a, realist, a real earnest desire, a real appeal towards Christ and towards his doctrine and towards his fellowship. Until then, you're not going to get it. Take it granted. Not even an inch, not even a budge of an inch that you're going to take it, dear brethren. Take it granted. The reality wherewith you have been given to the praise of His glory and His grace demands Bible doctrine. The reality demands the transformation, the renovation of your thinking. So that you can thoroughly search the scriptures as a pastor teacher, be obedient. Far less thinking that Lord has prospered me because of this material blessings. Lord has done to my life these things, that things. And have you not known how the way Lord has chosen us, though we are beggars, crippled, lame, blind, deaf, not worthy at all to be called to the praise of His glory. He has given us more worthy, higher than any other dispensation, which is nothing but alike any ketesis, new spiritual species unto Christ. Are we walking worthy of the calling wherewith Lord has called us? Are we walking, are we walking around to the vacation wherewith Lord has chosen us to the praise of His glory at least? No, we aren't. I can strongly tell we aren't. Why is it? No knowledge. Why? Ignorance. Ignorance undercuts every good intention, dear brethren. Ignorance followed by procrastination towards Bible doctrine. And you know, to grow up in the Bible doctrine, it takes amples of decisions in your life. It takes a temporary sacrifice of your life, where your fellow men, wherewith you have been highly qualified with them as well, when they are getting around two to three millions of dollars per month as the salary, what they're working around. But for you, though you have been highly intellectual than them, you have sacrificed your life for the word of the Lord, and when you compare after 20 years, when you meet each other, he says, I have earned so much of property, so much of this, so much of that. What did you earn? I say, I have, learned, I have earned the eternal property for all time. And this is my wealth. We are not here to do X, Y, Z things. We are here to show forth the glory of Jehovah. The earth is temporary. We are not going to stay here for a lifetime, as the people will think that we are already into the eternal state. We have come out with the millennium as well. Some morons come out like Don Blackwell. This earth is temporary. In the prevent heat, it shall melt off. And we are going to have a new heaven and a new earth. For a point of consideration, it is for us to look upon these things as Bible teaches to us. That we are right to go through the rapture. We are right to go through the tribulation. We are right to go through the millennium after the rapture. And the church has no work in the tribulation or in the point of considering that they have to go through the sufferings of the tribulations. And when you come back to the millennium, what do you have? You're going to come back with Christ to rule these nations. When you show forth your integrity right now in this church age by rightly dividing the word of truth and growing up to the strongest maturity of maximum glorification of Christ through the spiritual resurrection. But what is happening today in our pulpits? They are not aware that they are going to come back in the millennium again because the pastor has not taught them. The pastor has not explained to them the context of the subject, which wherewith he has to take this Alec Nicetasus as number one priority in his life. They are not aware, dear brethren. It's very pathetic to note that they are not aware about the simple truths. Just going around, pushing around, jumping around, begging around for aid. 
representing fake reports that I have been to a, born to an orphan and telling that I have my life like an orphan and I know what is the pain of an orphan. So if you can support me for your foreign aid, I can get some children of orphan and I can train them up. And you know what does this man do? He survives on that orphanage money. And how do he survive? You know, he cut shorts them the privileges. The maximum care what he has to provide for them. And he uses that for his belly and for his own family. Building and surviving upon the life of that orphan children. Smashing their stomach. Which rightly they have to get. Because he has claimed rightly for them and is not going to give them the 100%, but rather is going to give them 60 or 70%, the remaining 30% he keeps for his belly. And why such fakery of a reports? Why such lies of a life? You are not even worth qualified to have pure conscience towards men. Therewith, humanitically, you are not right. How can you tell by Christianity, I will be absolutely great? You need to cross-check those things. And there are some men who want to make their own daughter as widow, though, he's, though she's having a husband. And there are some men who want to make their own granddaughter as an orphan for the sake of foreign aid in my country, like India. And they are none other but Christians. They are not unbelievers. What for? Only to claim money, only to claim support, only to claim their lives to be happy. Then where is the principle of integrity of Christ in them? How they can be called as little Christians among themselves? Why? Ignorance and the fear of Jehovah upon their lives. Ignorance not to be taught by the pastor teacher for them the importance what it is to be Christ-likeness and what is the blessedness that we can enjoy to be like Christ when we go through the metamorphomai, through the knowledge of Bible doctrine. What is it? What is the failure for them not to go through the knowledge of Bible doctrine? Because no teaching in the pulpit. No teaching for the fear of Jehovah in the pulpit. No teaching in the pulpits of Bible doctrine. All replaced by gimmicks, by tricks, by works. All replaced by emotional-based worship services, Christian programs, Christian activisms. All replaced by the so-called so-and-so things that are going to work out through penance. Personal counseling, visiting. Their delight is not, their friend is not in the fear of Jehovah. Their delight is in the fear of their belly. What will happen tomorrow if I die or for my family and for my children? That's what they're worried. And what do they do? They want to accumulate wealth upon wealth upon wealth. On what name? On the name of Christ. Rather to accumulate the wealth of Bible doctrine to their soul and to the hearers. They are accumulating this heap of sins, as we can note the passages in the Jeremiah as well. By prophet Jeremiah was being called as a weeping one. When he was looking upon these marks, these methods, these trends, what they are going through, he was a man who literally wept. Why? No proper gain in the Bible doctrine, that's why. No proper interest in Bible doctrine, that's why. Just being happy for useless and worthless things. Looking around, getting along, ignoring along. What for me? Let me be happy. That's what they tell. Let me make my money, though I tell I'm feeding for the orphans. Let me make money, because though my daughter has a husband, I want to tell her she's a widow. Let me make my granddaughter as an orphan and get some money, some aid. To such kind of an extension, the people are working out because of your foreign aid, what you're providing for them. Without proper channel. And the way these men they are working around in my country causes unbelievers to spit upon them. Because when they come to know that he is a pastor and is doing such things, they really don't care a pastor. And the value of the knowledge of Bible doctrine has been absolutely poured down to drainage. Because of these pastors who work for lies and for some money, not for the fear of Jehovah. In fact, even there are some pastors in my country where I reside, 
He doesn't even have a theological seminary, but he has sent a fakery reports, and he tells that he has been feeding 500 pastors every month and is getting that money as well. And I don't know how the reports he's been maintaining to show to those people, and what are the photos he's sending to the foreign people as well. Fakery all the time, lies. Why? No obedience to God's word. No obedience to God's fear. Because they are still conforming to their former lusts in their ignorance. But dear brethren, have, we have to be the children of obedience, not being conformed to our former lust in our ignorance. Ignorance should be replaced by cognizance of Bible doctrine, not with arrogance when we tell the word of the Lord. Dear brethren, Peter first emphasizes the relationship we as children of obedience that we have to have with God the Father in verse 17. With Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, our Redeemer, in 18 of 21 of the same First Peter 1. And then Peter links this also to the relationship we should have with another in pure life in verse 22. And our relationship would be purely upon the word as per First Peter 1, 23. For our fellowship with the Father and for these other relationships, we need the exhortation of verse 13, which calls for an analogic exercise to have our lines graded and to live in the hope and the, and the expectation for His grace to be revealed in God in Christ's manifestation. Meanwhile, we have to behave as obedient children or literally as the children of obedience. We are the children of God and in this same respect, God who is light and love. This light needs to be seen in and through us. God's light is seen in our obedience. This is a marked contrast with what we used to be before we were saved. We, are, we were children or sons of disobedience, of Ephesians 2.2. 2. But through God's intervention, we, can, we are now children of obedience, of a high calling. One way we represent Christ God on earth is by showing that we are obedient children. This ongoing challenge goes together with grinding up our loins. And the second negative way to show obedience is not indulging in our former lusts, not being conformed or fashioned to our former lusts. This fashioning is derived from a word from which we also have have shaped form or model. As children of God, we cannot inwardly conform ourselves to this world, but the danger is that such shaping takes place in outward ways as well, that is, in our manner of speaking, our behavior, our walk, how we deal with one another, etc. We easily adapt ourselves to the fashion of the world, but we are exhorted not to do so. When the pastors themselves who have to be the leaders are performing these things, why will not the congregation follow easily into the traps of Satan, dear brethren? And concerning these things you ponder over, and as we get back in the next step, we shall continue our discourse. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship with you through the word. We pray that God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten us in these things, and make it a source of blessing and challenge, our in Lord, for we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.